On the spot tonight, we've got to focus on British PM's India visit because there's enough buzz in the air and everyone's around here, the big CEOs. We've got three eminent personalities to discuss the importance of this tour. We've got uh, live from London, Deepak Lalwani. He's from Aste Partners. You've got Andrew Moss, Group CEO of Aviva. We've also got Stuart Popham, chairman of Clifford Chance, large legal entity out there batting for Indian companies to merge with British ones. Andrew, let me start with you. Uh, India is one of uh, Cameron's first global stops. I think that would say a whole lot about India. What are the early signals you're taking on day one? Well, I think India-British relationships are strong anyway, but uh, for the government to leave delegation so early uh, in its period of office uh, to India, I think is a real signal of intent uh, and I think a very genuine uh, expression of not just interest, uh, but actually, uh, I think, a sort of really passionate interest uh, in the way that business relationships are taken forward between the two countries. All right, Stuart, the U.S. President Barack Obama seems to have a good relationship going with Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. How do you see this relationship panning out, the one between Cameroon and Dr. Manmohan Singh? I, I think that's a particularly important point. Uh, I think there's optimism on the British side. Uh, as well. Uh, we've been very well received. Uh, they're very friendly, very cordial discussions, uh, but uh, one's in depth as well with, uh, I think, candor and honesty uh, about the benefits that both countries can derive uh, from closer links. I, I'd be interested in knowing your views, Deepak. Sitting in London, you can probably get a sense of what's going on here because you're getting signals from the British press there. Uh, being the biggest foreign investor in India, that is UK, there have been concerns that trade has been waning a little bit. How big a boost will this visit be to trade? Well, in fact, I think it should be a big boost because the figure that you quoted of $13 billion is actually quite low compared to other countries. So, for example, uh, trade between, bilateral trade between India and China is about $70 billion plus uh, between India and the U.S. is around the $50 billion uh, dollars mark. So the whole idea is to boost these numbers and hopefully double it in, say, three to five years. This is uh, in the focus. George Osborne, of course, spoke in Mumbai on the financial sector. How do you read into the signals India's banking sector is sending out? Well, I don't know whether India's been slow on the uptake in relation to prudential regulation, for example. I think there's a lot of evidence uh, that it's actually been highly competent uh, in the way uh, that the crisis has been managed. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think the Chancellor has said today that there are probably lessons that can be learned from India uh, for the UK as well as vice versa uh, in relation to that. Nevertheless, uh, I think the agenda is about further liberalisation and certainly as far as my company is concerned, Aviva has said that we're interested uh, in uh, changing the foreign direct investment cap and seeing uh, an opportunity for further investment in the life insurance industry here in India. Stuart Popham, coming to you now, given that you are sort of a bit of a manager of kinds between the m and that goes on between the two countries, look at the financial sector. It's in the news. Lots of talk about how this crisis is creating opportunities. So what are you reading into them? Certainly things have changed in the financial uh, sector as a result of the, uh, the crisis uh, and the desire to do things on an international basis I think is being reflected. Uh, we see a lot of uh, activity now by the Indian regulatory authorities at the G20, at the Basel uh, Convention and so uh, the question of reciprocity and joint development of regulations uh, is really uh, I think now proceeding at quite a pace uh, with uh, both countries looking to uh, each other's experience uh, and trying to uh, create the right environment. Deepak, I'm getting you in here. The size of uh, Cameroon's delegation, in a sense, is unprecedented. There are some, what, 90-odd uh, members in this delegation. What do you think are the specific areas where you expect Cameroon to make a strong pitch? Well, indeed, it's not just the uh, size of the delegation, but also the composition. So I understand that there are uh, five cabinet ministers, including the chancellor and the foreign secretary. Now, as far as I can remember, this is unprecedented. And the signal that they wish to give to the Indian side is the respect and importance that they 
hold for India as far as the areas that they'd like to do business with India cover, for example, the financial services, uh, education and skilling, infrastructure and construction, defense equipment. Uh, these are really the sectors that they're interested in. Now that we have uh, Aviva's global CEO, Mitsas, we must ask him specifically about his sector. Andrew Moss, your approach towards insurance reform here in India. Are you more optimistic than ever about a potential increase in FDI? <laughs> well, um, I guess over the last few years, we've, we've heard a number of times that it may be coming shortly. I hope uh, that that is now a more realistic expectation. Uh, at this point, so if over the next year we see that, uh, we would be very positive about it. Uh, certainly it would be our intention uh, in due course to, to move up to a 49% holding. Uh, exactly how quickly we, we would have to think about it, but uh, we would like to own more of the business. Uh, we think that would be beneficial uh, for us, for our partner and for our customers. Well, Stuart, you've been at the helm of uh, conducting deals for Indian firms in the UK. What are the sectors according to you that are driving growth now? I, certainly I would uh, reflect on the infrastructure uh, activities uh, in India and around the world. I think the opportunities that are offered there are, are immense. I think though in terms of some of the service industries relating to telecoms, to media, uh, and also to financial services, these are areas where uh, expansion by Indian companies globally is very important and where there are opportunities uh, for inward and outward investment. Okay, gentlemen, just hang in there because I'm going to move away from what we've been discussing so far and bring our viewers uh, to look at a very interesting comment made by uh, George Osborne today here in Mumbai where he does point out that a big element in Indo-UK trade is the investments made by the Tata Group, both in Jaguar Land Rover and in Chorus. So today, the UK's Treasury Secretary admitted that Tata's had almost become a British firm. I would make this general observation. We have been... Uh, and we want to continue to be very supportive to businesses that have had difficult times. Uh, I met the uh, different chief executives of the Tata Group yesterday, tomorrow morning, with my Prime Minister. I'm having breakfast with Ratan Tata. Uh, and you know, we have made clear to him, because I saw him both here in Mumbai in 2006, and he, was, he visited uh, us in Downing Street. You know, we want to support British manufacturing. And British manufacturing... Uh, there is no bigger British manufacturer than Tata. And uh, so the help we can give in terms of a competitive tax system, a skilled workforce, uh, help with uh, get, navigating through the planning system and so on, all these things we're very willing to do. Stuart, I'm sure you heard that as well. These days, Tata is almost called a British company. What's your take? Ironic? Uh, great pride? I, I'm, I'm sure that from a, a British standpoint, both at government and business level, that uh, the Tartars are very, very welcome in the UK. I think there's some uh, sympathy that uh, they perhaps uh, bought at a time when markets were more buoyant uh, and then had to experience the recession. But they appear now to be coming out the other side very strongly. Uh, the government is particularly keen to ensure that they uh, have the right environment. Uh, and this relationship that's obviously very close uh, between uh, government ministers, uh, newly appointed as they are, uh, and Tata and other Indian companies investing, I think bodes very well for the future. Certainly, and I'm sure Ratan Tata, before his meeting tomorrow, is going to be watching out for all this news flow that he's getting to gather. Meanwhile, I'm getting back now to Andrew. I want to ask you uh, the largest story, the big message over the next two days that we're likely to see. Some corrective measures that are likely to come in place because of uh, trade expectations building up. Yeah, I think it's probably unrealistic to expect things overnight from a visit like this. Uh, but if it sets the scene, uh, creates more goodwill, creates more relationships, more contacts, uh, then all of that is positive over time. I don't think you can underestimate, though, the sort of atmospherics uh, around a visit of this size so early in the new government. And Deepak, finally to you, Cameroon, of course, will have to deal with the thorny issue of capping the number of immigrants who can live and work in the UK. Now, this may, of course, hurt India, doctors, here, nurses, engineers. Do you expect any relaxation at all from the UK government on this front? Well, it is a thorny issue. 
And we have to face ground realities out here. So, for example, the UK is facing unemployment due to the financial downturn out here, plus the UK is part of the EU. So there are ground realities out here. I expect the Indian side to lobby hard on this point. My own personal view is that there is very limited room for flexibility on this issue. It's an important issue, though, Deepak. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Pleasure having you all from business to politics to all that's going to be important when it comes to Indo-UK trade. That's a big story. It'll be a developing one here on ET Now.